Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to zoom out a little bit from the nucleus and consider the entire bulge, the bulge of the galaxy, called the galactic bulge. And notice that the size, of course, is significantly larger than the very tiny little region at the very center called the nucleus. The bulge is typically about 10,000 light years thick, sometimes as much as 15,000 light years, and about 20,000 light years across. Remember that unlike the Andromeda galaxy, which has more or less a spherical galactic bulge, the, the Milky Way galaxy has more of a bar-shaped bulge. At least that's what we believe now based upon our observations. But the overall structure and the overall content of the two would be virt virtually the same. Notice that the color of the bulge tends to be much more orangey, reddish to orangey color, rather than the bluish color we see in the spiral arms. In the spiral arms, there's still a lot of star formation occurring, and because of the star formation, the very bright blue giants are still being formed, and those are so bright that they outshine many other regular types of stars, so it gives a kind of a bluish tinge towards for the spiral arms. You don't have that in the bulge. There's virtually no O and B and potentially A-type stars. Those are all already, they've all already become red giants and probably uh, have finished their, their life cycle. And so therefore what we find at the galactic bulge is more or less the K and the M type stars, the orangey and the red stars at the very right bottom of the HR diagram on the main sequence. They're older stars, they're typically what we call first generation stars, stars that were formed near the very beginning of the formation of the entire universe. And therefore those stars contain virtually nothing but hydrogen and helium. They're 99.9% .9 or even more than that, simply hydrogen and helium and very, very little, very few other heavier elements, especially not the metal types that we would find in the newer type stars like our Sun. So we can see then that the O and B class stars are simply not present, that there's mostly the first generation stars called population two stars. And those population two stars contain very few of the heavy elements, more or less in the, in the density of about 0.01% to about 0.1%. So virtually no heavy elements are within those stars. We do sometimes see some older, what we call population one stars. Now our sun is a population one star, but it's only about 4.5 billion years old. There's some older population one stars, and those are typically called population one stars because they contain some of the heavy elements. Whenever a very large O and B type star goes through its final stages, they usually eject enormous quantities of these heavier elements that then get mixed with the nebulas, who then start forming newer stars. And so that's why the newer stars tend to have more of those heavy elements than the older stars. Now the old population uh, one stars contain heavy elements in the range of about 0.1% to about 1%, although you'll see very few stars in the bulge that have this amount of, of the heavy elements in it, because then it becomes more like a star like our sun. So the central region of the galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy, is just a region with older stars, not a lot of activity, not new star formation to any appreciable amount, and so the newer type stars are simply not there. Consequently, there's very few nebulas there that have the capability of forming new stars. So it's simply a very dense, and when we mean very dense, we mean very dense. It is so dense at the center, you simply cannot distinguish one star from the other star. There's just such massive quantities and such high density stars in the center that it just looks like a giant blob of stars that you simply can't see. Now the beauty of this picture, of course, is that we're looking in kind of at an angle towards the center, so we see the top portion of the galactic bulge, which is visible from our vantage point. If we were to live inside the Andromeda galaxy, trying to look towards the center, all these dark nebulas and, and even the bright nebulas, the dust and gas that's in between the, the center, the galactic bulge, and the spiral arms where it would potentially exist, well, you wouldn't be able to see the center, just like you can't see in our own galaxy. Our own galaxy, we can't see the very center of the bulge because there's too much dust and, and material in the way for us to be able to see this portion of it in visible light. However, if you look higher up or further down at an angle, we do seem to see the top portion of the bulge and the bottom of the portion of the bulge in visible light. So in visible light, it is possible to see just a very top part and the very bottom part where the very center of the bulge is completely obscured to vision in the visible in the visible spectrum. 
So that gives you kind of a feel for what the center, the bulge of the galaxy is like. Just an old place with old stars and not a much activity taking place, but enormous amount of light coming from there because the vast quantities of high density regions of stars. And that is called the galactic bulge. So, the galaxies, do they eventually nothing happens? Is everything that's supposed to happen to it already happened? Yeah. Yeah, will, will the galaxies become like the, like the bulge, basically? What you're asking is, will the whole galaxy become like the bulge? Yeah. And the answer is this, essentially, yes. Sadly enough, there will come a time, although billions of years into the future, where new stars will stop being formed in all galaxies. It's probably still 10, 20 billion years out, maybe even more. But yes, more and more as time goes by, galaxies will become more like the center of these spiral galaxies and essentially elliptical galaxies to a large extent are already like that where there's not a lot of activity in anywhere in the galaxy where not a lot of new star formation is happening. So yes, more and more the galaxy will become like that. What about the irregular galaxies? The regular galaxies, same thing. Eventually they'll become more like the, like the bulge of, a, of an elliptical galaxy. They'll stop producing new stars but at this moment Star formation is still very healthy, very well going on in the spiral arms of the elliptical galaxies like our Milky Way galaxy and in the irregular galaxies as well. What about the galaxies that are way out in the visible universe? So now you're asking about the galaxies that are really far away. Well, we see them as they were many billions of years ago. So they're still very active. You see a lot of star formation uh, in those galaxies. Uh, they look very different. Uh, we'll shoot some videos on that, on the concept, because they're, they're the ones that were formed like 10, 11, 12, 12 and a half billion years ago. And so those galaxies look very different than the galaxies today, because the galaxies today are the result of a lot of merging of galaxies over the years. So as the galaxies merged, they went through an evolutionary process that turned them into what we see today. So we'll also have to shoot a few videos kind of explaining how we think the shape of the galaxy has changed, mostly because of the interaction of the collisions of the galaxies. So the galaxy is far, far away. Are they in today time? Are they pretty much just dead galaxies? Well, they look like the galaxies nearby us, so they're not completely dead yet. Just like our Milky Way galaxy is still producing lots of new stars on a continual basis, so even those galaxies, because it's galaxy collisions, they'll still be producing stars. So it's, it's something, eventually, yes, the universe is going to die the way we know it today. Everything is going to quiet down, new formation is going to stop. Impacts from, uh, from in our own solar system, you know, the meteor impacts and the comet impacts will diminish over time. Things will become quieter and less exciting in our, in our universe, unfortunately. But, you know, that's not in our lifetime.